Good evening, everyone. My name is Christian Karasevich. I'm the CEO and founder of Social Chefs. And every single Thursday, I do this show for everyone. It's called Social Chatter. And what we basically do is we bring you the social media news from the past week, three to five articles that we think are probably the most important you should know about. We try to apply them to business. So for example, if it might be something that's you know maybe Snapchat related, um, we'll try to give you some insight into how you can start to apply it. And then we'll also give you three tools that you can use as well um, that we think can really help up your productivity, whether it's to make it easy to post on social, uh, to improve other facets of your business. And so if you have any questions during the show, you know, if you're, for instance, watching this uh, right now live, um, you can leave those in the comments. Uh, you can put slash Q, that'll put them on the sidebar for me to see. Um, you can also send us a tweet at Social Chefs, um, or you can also use uh, my, my personal Twitter handle, it's at CK Rocks. And if you're watching this, for instance, on Twitter, um, or sorry, if you're sorry, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, just you know, leave your questions in the comments, and um, we'll do our best to answer them. So, um, so with that, I'm going to kick off the show. I've got a lot of really good things to talk about today. Um, let me move some of these things around, actually, because I think there's a couple of really good topics that I want to have. Uh, I want to have my uh, my friend um, Nick Rishwain uh, join us on. And uh, Nick's actually in the middle of working on a couple of projects, but um, hopefully we're going to be able to get him on as well to kind of talk about some of these. So let's start off with start with some like you know kind of small news, I guess, you know, for the for the week. So um, one piece of social media news for this past week is that Facebook is testing um, mid-roll video ads in Facebook Live. Uh, this is a uh, fascinating I mean, it kind of piggybacks off the topic we talked about last week and that topic that topic was the fact that or, or sorry maybe it was the week before actually where facebook was kind of running out of places to put ads and so um they're talking about testing mid-roll ads and I'll give you guys a link to this so you can check it out but So there's your, there's your uh, link right there. But basically what they're doing with this whole mid-roll ads in live video, basically it would be a 15 second commercial break during a live stream. Personally, I understand the need to monetize this and to kind of you know start to layer ads on top of one another. But we're really honestly getting tired of seeing ads. And this doesn't just, you know, for example, let's just use like television. We're watching TV. We used to be able to TiVo, th or sorry, we used to have to sit through commercials. Um, we used to be able to then use TiVo to skip them. Um, what happened? Well, you got rid of the ads, but then you kind of still had to fast forward through them. Um, now we have cable boxes, for instance, for those of you who still have those. We have cable boxes where, you know, they still make you watch ads for certain things. Um, just to kind of get through like, you know, certain menus or, you know, maybe it's there or the first time you turn on your TV. Um, personally, I'm not really, I, I like ads, but I'm not really a fan of, you know, like just keeping them there. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's the whole like TV aspect. Well, let's say we bump, you know, we jump over to like, let's say we said, Hey, you know, what? I'm going to cut my cord and I'm going to go to like Hulu or something. Right. Uh, guess what? You still have ads. They follow you around because, you know, they're basically doing the same thing. In order to watch a show, they're putting ads, for instance, at the beginning, or maybe there's a commercial break. They do the same thing, for instance, with ABC and NBC. I talked about this as well a couple of weeks ago. You still have ads. So ads are not going away. It doesn't matter how much we say, hey, I don't like them. They're still here. They're going to find more creative ways to get them in front of you. You know, even if we go, for instance, from like TV to like streaming to like the web, the same thing is happening with the web. Everybody's putting, you know, pop-ups. It doesn't matter if you're on a desktop or a mobile device. On a desktop, you're getting, you know, sidebar ads, pop-up ads. Um, on a mobile device, it gets even more frustrating because a lot of times they don't function very well. And so you might be trying to read an article and, hey, you're trying to scroll and the device stops. And what happens? You end up getting an ad in the middle that you have to exit out of. It interrupts your reading flow. So let's uh, now get into, you know, Facebook. 
So Facebook obviously makes a ton of their revenue from ads. And, you know, they're talking about putting a 15 second commercial during a live stream. Um, I think it's kind of cool to like, you know, start to kind of, I'd like to see like a creative way that they do this. But here's the thing. Let's say I'm doing this live stream right now. And all of a sudden, hey, I get an ad that pops up that interrupts your flow, that interrupts your train of thought. You know, it's not any different than watching, say, like the news. You know, you're watching the news and, oh, hey, there's a 15 second ad that pops up, you know, or in the news case, like, you know, it's like, you know, it pops up for a commercial break. It's the same concept. It's just a little smaller amount of time. Um, so I don't know. I'm not I'm not sold on the idea of having mid roll ads. I know why I understand why they have to do it. But um, I really think that, you know. It probably if you're going to give us the option, if you're going to have mid roll ads, I think that the user needs to either a um, they need to know that they're going to have them because for example, if I was talking right now and up popped an ad, that's kind of annoying. And then I think it also creates really, you know, if I'm a business, I don't think that I really am going to like the fact that someone's going to see an ad in the middle of my broadcast. Um, people that are watching might think, well, Hey, is that an ad that that person paid for? You know, um, for example, and, you know, they might think, well, oh, I don't want to watch his show because, hey, he's got these ads in it, and, you know, or they're showing things that, for instance, might not be interesting. So let me uh, let me bring Nick in here real quick. Hi, Christian. What's going on, Nick? Can you hear me this week? I can. It looks like you got a, a Apple uh, earbuds, right? Yes, I, I uh, and I brought in my laptop because I had another show to do earlier today. Nice. And I didn't want to risk the uh, issues I was having last week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I'm glad we got that fixed. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, I'm with you on this, on the rolling ads and in, in, in mid-video ads for Facebook. I, I, I figured it was coming, but it, it reminds me too much of uh, regular TV. And I cut the cord quite some time ago. Mm -hmm. So it's a little surprising to me, not particularly surprising, but maybe more disheartening. I don't even know what the right solution is for this because I it's 15 seconds. Like I would understand, for instance, if I'm watching like TV, like you got accustomed to seeing ads. For instance, if I was watching like Hulu, you know, there's always like something that says, I think, you know, like I think it says you have to watch a certain amount of ads. That's right. Uh, you have the same thing, for instance, with like, you know, ABC, NBC. I want to watch a show. I, it, it tells me, oh, hey, like, you know, this is like, you know, add eight of eight or something like that. And I understand that. But when I go into like Facebook, I guess I don't like the concept of like breaking up my live stream. Yeah. Like, hey, let me interrupt this, you know, commercial break here. Like, you know, yeah. I don't know. Um, if they bring the content creators on board with that and give them a, a portion of the proceeds, then maybe. Uh, from a creating creator standpoint, I can understand it from a consumer standpoint. It's going to certainly decrease my watching. Absolutely. And what is kind of strange about this, I guess, is that, um, and I say strange because it's just, it's kind of an awkward topic, I guess. Um, the only way I could see this even being like, you know, one, I think that if they're going to do ads, they need to either a, do like a 15 second before the show or a 15 second at the end. So basically have, you know, two slots, mm -hmm. but putting something for instance in the middle, I, I just don't like, what if my show is only like a five minute, you know, it's a five minute live video. Are you going to have an ad? Yeah. Uh, is there going to have to be a certain amount? Uh, what ads can be shown? For instance, am I going to start seeing competitors? I mean, it's just, it, it just, you know, it doesn't change the model that already exists. Yeah, I, which is which is funny because I, I thought the same thing. It does not change the model, the model that that caused me to cut cut the cord to cable TV. Mm -hmm. You know, and now they're bringing it back, or, or seemingly bringing it back to to online live video or live streaming. So it does not change the model. It actually redevelops or or reintegrates the model that that i already can't stand and also hulu is mm -hmm. i did a seven day free trial and mm -hmm. was w willing to pay but i found out in the seven day free trial that they've got commercials even though they're short 15 cents there's like you know that's that's what i'm trying to avoid as a consumer right and it's it's interesting because it's like we don't want ads is the bottom line right it doesn't matter what platform like we don't want ads and yet right. you, you still have to endure them i mean yeah 
you know, I, and the other thing I, I also think, and this is probably more like a, for me, it's like a sort of a personal thing. Like if I'm, for instance, using like Facebook Live, right? I want to use Facebook Live whenever I want to. Like, you know, yes, sometimes I'm going to schedule content and say, oh, I'm going to go live on Facebook, uh, use Facebook Live, you know, um, a couple hours before my show. But then what also might happen is, I might also then say, okay, you know what? I'm going to randomly go live. Like there has to be some sort of setup, I would think, for ads, right? right. To be able to say, hey, let's like, it's my show. Like I, I want to, you know, I want to approve what's there, but I don't want to be doing that during the show. Yeah. Like, if they did something YouTube style where it, it showed up in the block down here where somebody could X out of it if they want. Right. It's still a kind of this equivalent of a banner ad, but... Uh, I, I can see that as a little bit more from a consumer stand, a standpoint, I can see that as a little more palatable. Yep. So I'm, uh, so it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of happens with this. So, um, you know, not really a, not a fan of the direction this is going, but we'll see. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I full agreement with you on this. So, um, I'm, so I'm gonna keep going here, um, and I. By the way, I do have a hard stop at six or earlier tonight if we can do it. Yeah, I, I, quick as we can do it, I'm, I'll, I'll do it. So, uh, topic number two, we've got. Uh, you, you probably know most of these topics, but topic number two, LinkedIn influencer videos. So, bottom line here, LinkedIn has reached out to about 500 influencers. Are you one of them by chance? No, I'm not. I'm not considered an influencer on LinkedIn. And it's interesting. I wonder if I was actually wondering if this was like their hoax. They like they did a few years ago, you know, where yeah. it's like, oh, hey, you're in the top one percent of you know your area or something. Right. Um, but they're basically giving influencers that they've invited into their program the ability to um, to do videos. Um, kind of cool. I know that there's gonna you know there's gonna be people that are like really gonna jump you know chomp a bit to kind of get into this, um, but. What are your thoughts? I mean, is it just kind of like a me too play or what? I think it is a me too play. And, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's a necessary play. And I'm, this is a play that I'm actually excited for because many of our members, the experts.com uh, mm -hmm. members, know LinkedIn, tolerate LinkedIn much better than they tolerate other social media channels. Mm -hmm. And if I'm trying to convince them that they need to do live video in order to, show authentically their their expertise and their services and things like that mm -hmm. i may have a better chance of convincing them to try live video on linkedin as opposed to live video on periscope facebook fire talk blab whatever you know so uh they find it i think again this will be more palatable for our particular market and, and they're doing, you know, I think the interesting thing about this is they're doing 30 second videos. Mm -hmm. So again, I think it comes back to it's more ads in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with this. I mean, you know, I think that it's about time that they did this. Yes, um, I, I think it's going to be a, it's a prelim to something more for them. I think this is a initial, let's see how video works out and then see if we can institute uh, Microsoft now has LinkedIn, uh, Microsoft has Skype, uh, can mm -hmm. they now uh, roll out their own version of live video? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm fairly excited to see where this is going to go. I think that, I think it could have, you know, um, I think it could be a pretty good thing actually. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes and excited to have them open up more to more people. So um, next topic, because I don't, I don't have any, uh, I don't really have anything else to say about LinkedIn video. I mean, it's 500 people that got invited to do it. You know, great. Glad they're going to do it. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll just see. It kind seems of like a beta test, essentially. <laughs> yeah, that probably is what it is. So um, topic three, and uh, are you a big Snapchat user? I am. Okay, so let's, uh, let's we're, this is just a quick one, actually. Snapchat is launching, uh, they've got geo stickers. You want to tell everybody about that one? This one I have not followed up on because it has been, uh, I, I'm not familiar with, I don't think I have it yet. And it, it's been kind of silenced by the other probably big nice. story that you have coming up. Absolutely. So uh, geo stickers, I mean, you know, you had geo filters, but geo stickers, I, I actually just got this update. Uh, they're basically stickers that are available 
in some of the biggest cities around the world and you can send them in the chat or stick them on snaps okay pretty straightforward uh new update for anybody who is a snapchat user um if you don't have it yet you know i do notice some of these features are kind of odd like they roll out and then i get it and then like the following day i get another update like telling me hey welcome we've added geo stickers <laughs> so um in fact, that 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 begs the question. I'm going to sign out of my account and sign into the brand account because, uh-huh. strangely enough, I have received new rollouts of things to the brand account, uh, the experts.com brand account, many more times, or or in advance of getting them on my personal account. So I want to see if that if that holds true here. And um, I typically I, I see a very similar thing happen sometimes. It's it really depends on, I think, like, you know, what, like, just kind of how they roll these things out. Like, sometimes you get things, sometimes you don't. But um, I have found that logging in and logging out does, or sorry, log out and then log back in does sometimes work. And sometimes you have to restart. So, oh, interesting. So. Okay. So, bottom line, everyone who's watching, Snapchat geo stickers, they let you basically have, um, you know, a, a sticker that is geared toward the region that you're in. So, um, Pretty good. This is going to be very useful, for instance, for um, uh, this would be great for like, you know, the Olympics, you know, and, and those types of things, you know, those yeah. types of events. And this is going to be, am I going to find this? Well, there's just another picture of me. Am I going to find it in the emoji or the sticker icon, do you think? Well, so the way they're going to work is, you know, so here's the thing. They're only available right now, for instance, for Los Angeles, New York, oh, okay. uh, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Honolulu, London, Sydney, uh, Sao Paulo, uh, Paris, uh, Riyadh. 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 Sorry, Riyadh, sorry. Um, and you also have to have location services enabled to be able to see them. Okay. All right. So I'm not probably going to experience it because I'm not in one of those cities. Yeah, probably not right now, but it is kind of cool that they're going to have some of these things um, for that area that somebody might be in. And then, you know, the benefit also is that um, I think as they start to roll these out more, they'll give you some more personalization based on where you're at. So kind of cool. If I'm a business, um, I might want to take advantage of some of these things, uh, yeah. especially if I'm like, you know, in a, for instance, like the host city for the Olympics. Like, Yes, I, I agree. In that situation, it's going to be beneficial and uh, you know of course the big cities they'll they'll get them first because it gives it gives the most visibility across uh more channels that way absolutely so let's see so we've got uh let's see what else we got topic four I, i'm not i'm not up to the one you're thinking about yet last this is the that's okay one. i'm already exhausted with that one i'm sure you you probably you may be feeling the same way um, I am actually, it's actually really interesting, you know, just, just kind of seeing how much people are kind of talking about it. Like there's just, it's too much right now, I think. So, yeah. Okay. Overkill. So let's, uh, let's, let's take a, uh, let's, uh, let's do this one last topic and then we'll get into the big one. So right. this one, not that major of an update, but, uh, Twitter for iOS, you now have keyboard shortcuts on the iPad. Ooh. which is kind of neat. And so this is actually really useful if I'm, for instance, a, you know, a heavy Twitter user and I use my iPad a lot. Um, very good, you know, feature to have because I can do my, you know, I can do command N um, to start a new tweet. Uh, oh, I, I like that. Move left, like one tab doing like command shift and then bracket. Um, let's I like see. that. You can also command W that'll close a new tweet dialogue, which is just like using it on, for instance, a Mac command W closes something. Um, and you can also cycle through the different views like home and notifications and moments and messages and me um, by doing command and then one through five. So like command okay. one, for instance, I think is home and two is notifications and so forth. So uh, not a, you know, not really a major thing, but it's more of a productivity thing. If I'm a business, yeah. I definitely want to, um, I want to, you know, and I use my iPad a lot. I want to pay attention to those keyboard shortcuts. Yeah, uh, that's good. Uh, I'd like to see that go to the iPhone. That would be helpful. But I don't know if uh, if that's an opportunity or not, if there's an opportunity for that or not. Yeah, well, it, it is kind of interesting because, for instance, I use a 6 Plus. Do you use a, a Plus model? 6 Plus. Yeah. And so it's it's fascinating because there's a lot of times where, like, for instance, I like the fact that I can rotate my device and I get split screen on certain things. 
but I would love to have some of the split screen features on the iPad, you know, on mm. my iPhone, um, you know, the ability to like slide over and have, you know, like, you know, uh, to be able to like split my screen properly and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see where this goes. Absolutely. Um, you know, and it, and it is good that at least we're seeing these kinds of updates because they're making the device a lot more useful. Yeah. So um, let's get to the, uh, you know, let's get to the big topic. <laughs> topic five, Instagram has launched stories to compete with Snapchat. And let's, let's start off. Like, what are your overall thoughts? Do you, you know, do you think this is a good thing or what do you, what do you think? I'm not a big IG user. I, I okay. just, I'm not, it's, it's, we haven't found it beneficial for, I don't know if we haven't found it beneficial for the company or we just, uh, I never implemented it for the company and I don't think it's somewhere where our audience is going to be. And, uh, on my personal use, I, I use it only to basically consume comedy and, and things like that. I, it would just be one more place where I'd be interacting with many of the same people and, and don't necessarily need it for that. Mm -hmm. So my, my feelings are, you know, if you use it and, uh, and it works for you and your audience is there, then this is probably a really good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you think that, okay, so do you think this is, you know, is it a ripoff of, a, of Snapchat's feature? Absolutely. The, the CEO even said it, the CEO mm -hmm. of, of uh, Instagram even admitted that the, he gave full credit to, to Snapchat. Mm -hmm. So he didn't even try hiding it. So, okay. So let's, let's start with, I guess the first question. Okay. So if I am a user and I have not yet developed my Instagram or sorry, my Snapchat strategy, if I, I'm a, a business for instance, and I'm not used Snapchat yet or not quite ventured into it too much. Mm -hmm. Should I, and, and let's say I use Instagram already. Should I stick with Instagram and leave Snapchat out of that? I don't know that you need to leave it out, but if you've got the audience and you've got limited time, mm -hmm. then stick to where your audience is. And, okay. You know, if, if you have no audience, if you don't think it's the same audience over on Snapchat, then spend your time on Instagram because there is a limited number of hours in the day and an increasingly unlimited number of social media platforms. So, you know, that's, that's a great point. Um, so basically pick, you know, pick the one where you're going to get the most benefit from. Awesome. Yeah. Um, do you, let's see, what's another question we could ask about this? Okay, so we talked about, um, you know, if I'm a, if I've not jumped in, okay, so let's just say, hey, you know what, I'm already on Snapchat. Mm -hmm. I'm already teaching people as a business owner. Do I make the switch back to Instagram? You know, a, a person that I know uh, through the Snapchat platform seems to, what he'll do is he'll talk about things in one or two or three snaps on mm -hmm. Snapchat. And he says, look, if you really want it more in depth, I've actually done it in a one minute video over on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, well, that's an interesting way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, not, he doesn't generally do it as a teaser where, you know, uh -huh. just to send people over to the other platform. Okay. So that gets exhausting. Uh, yeah, the people that's who, my next question, actually. Yeah, the people who will just do something on one to bring you to another, mm -hmm. that, that gets pretty annoying. Um, but I think if it's one, if it's a way to do uh, an uninterrupted one-minute video on something, then okay, then there may be some value there. And, and then a continuous, but how many for a seven or eight, seven or eight-minute story, uh, when you could go to YouTube for a, for a more in-depth video. So, okay. So let's, let's talk about that real quick. Like if I am on, um, uh, for example, if I'm on, uh, you know, if I'm using like the Snapchat feature versus like the Instagram stories feature, what are the differences really? I'm not sure there are money. I mean, I mean, okay. So like, like, okay. So like, let's talk about from a time perspective, like Instagram stories, you got what, 24 hours, I think. And then it expires. So, so it's the same time frame as, is Snapchat. Mm -hmm. uh, you've, got, you've got drawing tools. What else you've got? Um, you know, obviously it's within the Instagram platform. You've got, you've got drawing tools. You've got, uh, I, I guess the only thing they don't have yet on there is um, masquerade, or, which I think actually is probably going to be the next iteration of this. It is masquerade, uh, including masquerade on their, on their uh, Instagram or their posts. Yeah. yeah. And, and that actually is like, it's so seamless. It's not funny. Yeah, 
I could literally, if I'm on my mobile device, I could open my, uh, like, it'd be cool if like, they just either a fold masquerade into Instagram, mm-hmm. give you an option there or something, or B do it where you go on to, um, you know, or you open masquerade, I guess, and then use it. And then maybe you can dual, bro- you know, dual share or something, maybe like, send something to Facebook and send something to Instagram possibly. Um, that might be, yeah. To cross pollinate. I, yeah. I guess you could do that. And I do know how long that, the post will be able to be in an Instagram story. Will it, is it a 10 second post or can you do a, up to a one minute video? Um, let me see. I was assuming that you can do up to one minute video, but I, that maybe I shouldn't have assumed that. Let me see. So, okay, so they disappear in 24 hours. They don't appear in your profile grid or in your feed. So, basically, people will see them at the top on Instagram. Um, let me see. Oh, I'm not really sure, actually, because I thought I'd seen people that had longer ones. Yeah. Let me actually open the app, because the other thing is my feed is just, like, filled with stories, which they're cool, but it's just like, okay, it's more content to consume. Um, right. And who's got the time? That's what it. Co- that's why uh, it, that comes back to the time for me. Um, and go where your that, audience is. Do what? Go where your audience is is just what it comes back to for me. Absolutely, but you know what, what's so interesting about all of this? You know, and you made a really good point earlier about somebody taking like you know a, doing a Snapchat video and then driving somebody, for instance, back to Instagram to watch you know potentially a longer video. What are your thoughts on like that whole like practice? Like I like the idea of doing it, but at the same time, that's too fragmented. Like it's let me send you fragmented. like let me send you let me show you a snap. Let me say, hey, go follow me on Instagram. And then let me go like on Instagram, for instance, maybe I say, Hey, go like go check out like my YouTube video or go check out or my Facebook live video or go check out my blog post. Like yeah. It's just it's like I'm on like, an Easter egg hunt, you know? Yeah, different content for different platforms, but mm-hmm. but don't just don't cross pollinate to direct everybody to one. You know, if you're gonna if or if you're gonna do exclusive exclusive content, then tell people that look, it's only gonna be here. I'm sharing. I'm telling you right on Snapchat that you need to go and if you're interested in this, then you need to go and look at it on Instagram because that's the only place that I'm gonna do it. Yeah, it's, this is really it's really fascinating. I think because um, it, it's really fascinating because like I like the idea of this, but then it's like okay, like it still goes back to the same strategy, which is build on one platform, get really good at that platform, and then move on to the other ones. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because I otherwise, for a business coming into it, they really need to see where their audience may be. And certain businesses, I think Instagram is going to be better for them. Uh, and others, Snapchat might, you know, if you can have a little bit more fun with your business, Snapchat might be there. Um, and Instagram's got an algorithm thing, so I don't know how the stories are going to play in the algorithm. So I, I, I am. So on the flip side, so like, so from a business standpoint, strategy wise great advice absolutely you know fantastic advice you know, which is go to where your audience is at you know pick the like if you're not for instance if you're not on instagram yet and you're still on snapchat stick with snapchat experiment a little bit with instagram you know yeah. see where you're gonna see what you're gonna do um and then on the flip side what i would also say you know is, is probably really important with this is um if i'm you know if i'm gonna be um, using you know if i'm gonna be using my social channels um I want to have a very cohesive strategy, like or just a plan in place of what content is going to go on which channel. That's right. Um, you can't, like, you cannot do everything. That's right. If I have, for instance, like, if I've got a team I work with, of course I can, because I can just have somebody manage one channel and someone manage another and another and another. Right. But, you know, you're trying if, to do it yourself and you've you, got a business to run, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get your business run because right. you're going to be posting all your stuff on your channel. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so the other thing though, I, so the other thing I want to kind of talk real quickly on this is, okay, so Snapchat has very big audience, but Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, you know, all those tools, they have a ginormous audience. Yes. Okay. 
So do you see, do you foresee, you know, this is kind of like that whole like halo effect, I guess, in a way, like they do one little thing and all of a sudden it has this huge, like just tsunami effect, essentially. Or, you know, do you see that happening? Like, just like it kind of almost like the Apple effect. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I, I haven't thought about it that much. I'm not sure that it's, it, it's so fluid the situations with these platforms that are, are fluid i guess is what i'm looking for uh constant change constant adaptation so i don't know that one change like this is going to be a, a cause a tsunami effect or i've i've seen one or two people say okay well i'm leaving snapchat to go to instagram i'm assuming it's because they have a much more engaged audience on instagram but if you've got an engaged audience on Snapchat, then stay there. Absolutely. You know, and what is actually really um, what what I think overall is just, just kind of really fascinating about all of this is that in order to have any sort of traction, you have to be it's almost like you have to be entertaining, like just beyond just entertaining. Like you have to be like it's almost like everybody's like just you know, got their like pom poms or whatever. And they're going like, hey, like, come over here. Look at me you know, check out my channel right. um, because, you know, like everybody is literally jumping on like, you know, oh, Insta for instance, and this kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier, which is like, you're kind of sick of hearing about Instagram stories. Yeah, I kind of am actually. And it just came out, what, two days ago? Two not days even, ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's crazy because it's like literally, okay, hey, Instagram stories, are, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's putting, oh, check out my article. Check out this, check out my video. And it's like, everybody's an expert already. Absolutely. It, you know, and it's, uh, you know, and it's like, okay, it's really cool. But I think like from an, you know, from a user standpoint, um, if I'm just jumping into this and I say, you know, I see somebody talking, telling me how to do it, like, it's great. But um, Instagram stories, I mean, you really need to like, you need to look at the overall, like, you know, goals of your business. Yeah. Let me just, you know, let me just start like using this thing. It's pretty awesome, you know, because it's useful. Yeah. But it's oh, yeah. much to keep up with, I think. It is. It's, uh, it's overwhelming even for those in in the field, I think it mm -hmm. can become very overwhelming. You're like, oh, you know, even I, I don't know if you ever get it, but I get it. Uh, really? Do I have to learn another one? You know, like that was kind of how my feeling was with the anchor app and, and that disappeared. So mm -hmm. I didn't disappear, but uh, didn't really grab on. And I was fine with that. All right, great. There's about one week of people excited about it. And then it just, the excitement disappeared and, We'll see. Yeah. There's definitely more uh, usability for stories across the board, but it's got to be, you got to choose which one's right for you or your company. And, you know, and what is kind of cool about this is, I mean, you know, using, you know, using Instagram stories, I mean, it's, it's not any different. I mean, like, you, know, you just basically go on Instagram, there's a little icon in the top left corner, you tap on it, you know, it brings up your camera, you tap on the other side, you can go back to your screen, you know, and you can just, you know, so it's kind of cool in that sense, but you know, it's, it's not like rocket science. It really comes back to, you know, having a, just a, a overall like solid strategy of how you would use this. Yeah. Um, I, I think, yeah. I heard Saba say, you know, Saba Siddiqui, mm -hmm. she, I heard her or saw her post something that if you know how to use Snapchat stories, it's going to take you about 50 seconds to learn Instagram stories. It's that similar. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um pretty good i mean overall i think it's you know it's a really it's very uh bold of facebook to you know to really jump into you know using it yeah uh, it also shows the power of storytelling yes well everything is becoming about storytelling but That's right. you know but here's the thing it's not just it's not just also about storytelling because it's about storytelling but it's about authentic storytelling right because anyone for instance can sit here and fabricate you know this amazing story you know through their images and whatnot and a lot of people do that on their social media channels yeah you know, they puff themselves up to like be bigger than they really are yeah. and you know and you have a lot of people that buy into that stuff and you know it's you kind of have to know who you're dealing with i mean who you're right. working with, you know what's the person's background for instance that's I mean, right we get, we get that in the social media field a lot a lot you know, people, it's like, oh, hey, this person got a slick website. Great. You know, oh, they say they can help me do this. And it's like, awesome. But then it's like, okay, well, what have they actually done? You know, yeah. yeah. Like, who, who cares if they helped like, a, you know, one little small business? Like if they work for big companies, for instance, 
you know, unless they have a track record of small businesses and that's who they right. work with. Mm-hmm. But you, you know, they've helped one. Mm-hmm. Or, or my my favorite is the slick website. But when you try and do any due diligence on a particular person, and mm-hmm. you can't find much about them, so mm-hmm. well, why don't they have any other visibility online if they're claiming to be a social media person? Well, Absolutely, because they probably set up a website to try and grab some gullible people and maybe take advantage. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I see that a lot. And, and um, I also see that even with like some articles, for instance, they write a lot of articles, guest posts on a bunch of sites and I get constant pings, you know, back because it's like, oh, hey, like, so, you know, so and so linked, like, you know, it's a, you know, a ping back. And I get, you know, a ping that somebody was linking back to my article. And then it's like, oh, hey, they were linking back to my article on another site. And all they did was copy it and put it on their site. It's like, you know, it makes their site look really good. Hey, I've got this awesome article, but it's yeah. like you didn't write it. And yeah, I didn't give you permission to publish my content there. Right. So, um, so those are the topics I have for today. Um, the last thing I want to do is I want to cover some other tools, unless there's something else I forgot. I don't think I did. Right. Not as far as I know. You did okay. five topics. Uh, and by the way, topic wise, I, I don't think there are any other topics to talk about. Right. Well, yeah, one, the last one sort of took up the last 48 to 70, 72 to 48, 48 to 72 hours. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's going to, you know, it's going to consume us even more, I think. And by the way, just one last thing about Instagram stories. And I think this is actually really like, it's fascinating. So, okay, a feature came out, Instagram stories it came out. Everybody's like, this is awesome. Everybody jumps to Instagram. Everybody's now like, you know, they're talking about it. This is really good. I like this. They've now written tutorials. They've written, vid- done videos. They've done all that content. Okay. So the fascinating thing, I think the fascinating part is that that happened within like a couple of hours. Mm-hmm. It didn't happen like in over the course of a week of like, Oh, Hey, let me get this video out. Like people were like, like jump, jump, jump. And it's just yeah. really funny. Yeah. Um, I saw somebody within 24 hours post their, their tutorial for, about 300 bucks on how to use Instagram stories. And mm-hmm. now I, my response to my, what I told somebody else was, it seems like what you can do is replace in your templates, uh, for that tutorial, you can replace Instagram or you can replace Snapchat with Instagram. So mm-hmm. probably a pretty easy course to put together. Yeah. It, what's, well, what's really fascinating to think about it is just that it's, um, that's really quick to yeah. put this stuff together. And, and I don't, I don't mind like, you know, saying, Hey, like capitalize on it, you know, but yeah. in this case, like you don't need a hundred tutorials from somebody on this, not to mention most of them. It's not even really authentic. A lot of times they just like, yeah. let me grab their video from their, let me grab their video and mm-hmm. let me put that on my, you know, let me put that in my content versus yeah. like, Hey, let me actually create a very, you know, thorough guide to using this. Not just yeah. like, Hey, here's how to do it. So, yeah. Um, so really fascinating. So let's talk tools real quick. Uh, tool number one. I don't know if you've checked this one out, but it's called Busker. Have you, uh, have you had a chance to look at this one? Uh, I haven't. I'm familiar with it just because we're pretty active in live video. Uh, mm-hmm. But I have. I, I think I've only logged into Busker once or twice myself. Uh, but I'm hearing a lot of people enjoy it because you can give tips. So a kind of a nice way to monetize your content early on. So tell people about that. Like what exactly? Okay. So you said you can give tips. Great. Right. Yeah. What? So um, elaborate. You're a piano player and okay. you go live and you've got uh-huh. the phone on a tri- uh, on your tripod and mm-hmm. people like listening to you play piano. They can send you a tip uh, in cash. Oh, we mean tips meaning cash money. Okay. Yeah. They like money. They can send you some money. Okay, I was thinking. Uh, I was thinking tips like, oh, hey, like I could give a, I could do a video tip and then merchandise it or something. But no, you know, yeah, you know. it's my understanding is they can tip you for your service. Uh, like if if you have, or if you give you know good, good how tos or do it yourself ideas or something, they can they can mm-hmm. give you a tip for that as well. So so that's a you know good tool, free tool, um, pretty easy to use. I find it I do find it kind of interesting that. Um, I'd love to actually hear case studies of people that are making pretty good money off of this because um, I like the idea that you can, you know, sell like, you know, you can support somebody and you can sell merchandise. Really awesome. 
think it still also comes down to though a content plan mm-hmm. because this is yet another thing. Like I can't be live on all these platforms. There has to come out, you know, there needs to be a tool at some point that says, Hey, here's all the live streams that I'm on. And, you know, I know there's some out there, but they kind of like don't all work very well. So, yeah, yeah, it's, this is one of those things that you're going to be overwhelmed by the number of live video apps that are available too. So find where your audience is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and, yeah, and you can't like, you can't talk on the, you know, you can't talk on multiple live videos at the same time. So, um, so yeah, so Busker tool number one, only available for iOS tool number two. It's funny. Every single week, it seems like we have a photography app. Yeah. You, you had some good ones last week when I, but I couldn't comment on it. Was the, oh, this is the one that Eileen mentioned last week, right? Uh, a couple weeks ago, actually, this is actually Last the photo editor. Yeah. Um, nice to have, you know, another nice to have, um, Basically, it lets you, you know, you do some of your photo editing, you can do some paint on effects, your drawing, all that sort of stuff. Um, I guess, you know, I, I like PicMonkey for certain things. Okay. I tend to, you know, honestly, I tend to kind of prefer Canva and, you know, mm-hmm. Adobe Spark Post, and, you know, and those tools. But PicMonkey also a really good tool um, to have in your toolbox. And, and this is a free app, um, but you do need their, either their monthly or their annual plan um, to really kind of get you know, to get something out of it, mm. um, you know, stored on mobile and web customizable, you know, yada, yada, yada. Right. It's pretty much the same thing. Right. Um, I, I would just say, if you're going to use, you know, any of these tools, just, uh, you know, be, um, just be aware of what, like, you know, it's free. I mean, somebody may, somebody else may already do it and they might do it better. Right. Absolutely. Um, you've got, you know, cause you've got pick monkey, you've got Canva, you've got Adobe spark post, you've got, you know, word swag, like, each one of these apps has essentially a specific function. Um, some of these apps, you know, could theoretically just tie in that functionality and just have it where you get rid of an app. Right. But I'd recommend downloading PicMonkey, check it out. And um, if you like PicMonkey, um, see if you want to keep it. But if you're like, hey, you know what? I've got something else that has the same functionality or it works better. Don't be afraid to delete an app because yeah. every time you buy an app, and it doesn't matter if it's free or paid, you probably know this, um, you can go back to the app store, you can search for the app, yeah. And you can uh, you can either re-download it or you can just go under your updates and there's a list of purchased apps at the top and you can see every single one you've ever bought and the ones that aren't on your phone. So, yeah. um, and you can also download your download to your computer as well. So, not a big deal if you you know right. uh, keep it and try it for you know 24 hours or you know just get rid of it. So, cool. um, the last one, and I don't know if you've actually had a chance to check this one out, Dropbox Paper. No, have it for second. iOS and Android. Um, but basically, what it does is it helps with team collaboration. And one thing you're probably going to notice here, um, I'm pretty sure you'll notice this actually, is is that a lot of these apps are really mimicking the own the, the functionality of other ones. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So so what does Dropbox Paper remind you of? I don't know. I'm looking at it real quick. Dropbox Paper. Slack. So Slack, we got Slack, we got Google Drive. I mean, we've got, you know, you've got a lot of different, I mean, it's a free app, great. But what's fascinating about just, you know, just overall, it's like, oh, great, like another cloud storage service. And hey, you're going to give me a separate app to, you know, uh, be able to work collaboratively on documents with Teams. Right. So um, if you're a Dropbox user, you know, I I use Dropbox for some things. I I don't use it for everything. Yeah. Uh, if you're a Dropbox user, it's definitely worth, you know, checking out. Sure. Uh, you know, what are your thoughts? I mean, like, for instance, I use Slack, I use Google Drive, and I use Dropbox. Right. And I, I've used uh, Google Drive and Dropbox mostly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're a small company, so we don't we haven't used Slack yet. But uh, I've heard good things from those who do use it and who do enjoy it. So... You know, it's one of those things. Uh, maybe you get to app fatigue and uh, pick the one that works for you. Yeah, um, and that's actually a really good point, you know, actually. So speaking of app fatigue, I mean, I, I think I talked about this actually last week, but you can have, I think it's like 15 different apps, or sorry, you get 15, or we, we, yeah, we talked about this, right? 15 different yeah. um, pages of apps. Yes, yeah. awesome. that's right. But, you know, but at the same time, kind of going back to that whole like app fatigue, like, there's, you know, chances are, this is probably what's, you know, what happens with you or with most people. 
you download something, you use it. And then what happens? It goes in that junk drawer, you know, right. in this case, that junk drawer is a folder on your phone. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's like that junk drawer, just like, you know, just follow us, just follows us. Yeah. It's like, we have one yeah. at our house. We've got one on our computer. That's the downloads folder usually. <laughs> yep. That's right. We've got a folder on our phones, you know, which have like just, just too many apps. I mean, um, so again, I would probably say it's probably good to do an app purge every so often. Every once in a while, it's a good idea. Because I mean, it's like, and this is the thing, like it doesn't matter what kind of device, you've got an iOS device or Android device, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, the more stuff you put on it, it still needs, you know, memory, or sorry, That's it still right. needs storage to be able to function. And so if you're using it and, you know, like, if you find out, hey, you know what, this doesn't work as well for me, or, you know, um, I really like this other one better, like, just get rid of it. Get I mean, it. it's still going to be there. So um, yeah. I'm actually going to open the Dropbox app actually right now because I, um, I mean, personally, I use Drive. Okay. You know, but I use, you know, I, I was one feature. I, so here's the thing. I really liked Dropbox when it had the functionality to um, automatically upload my photos. So like I could be at home and like just open it and like just leave my phone on and it would automatically like store everything there and I could get rid of them on the device. Um, but Google has Google Photos, so I don't really need that. Right. That's right. And, and then actually the other thing for me, at least for Dropbox, is just really the cost. I don't really think you know cloud storage should be getting cheaper you would think you would think you would think it's only a matter of time we use google drive uh, mostly at the office and personally i've got uh, i use icloud but i've also got a, a huge uh, hard drive so i've got plenty of memory on on the macbook um you have the little then, macbook like do you have a little thin macbook or what i've got the macbook pro okay cool yeah so yeah, but I've got, I think, 256 gigs on that. And then I've got iCloud backup for that. So what are your thoughts on, like, you know, which, like, for instance, why do you use Google over the other ones? Probably yeah, because, yeah. I, probably simply because we manage the YouTube page, the Google Plus page and those things. So it's, uh, I'm already logged into that. And, and that's probably why we use it to manage some other things. And a few of us here in the office are, are logged into the same Google Drive. It just makes it easier. So in a way, it's like, so so I'm just going to make a prediction here. I don't think it's going to happen, but um, I could see, I could see, so we said this is kind of like, you know, kind of like Google Drive, but it's also like Slack. Right. Slack because you have, whole, you know, the communication side. And in a way, it's like Google Drive in a way because you can also, you know, comment and collaborate and whatnot at the same time on a piece of content. Um I could see Slack maybe getting bought by Google at some point or even Dropbox, you know, to yeah. somebody taking out like, you know, um, because good Salesforce just purchased quit this mm -hmm. week for $750 million. And it certainly looks a lot like a Slack type of a Slack slash office, uh, Microsoft office type of uh, combination. And, you know, so there is some, um, some merging or or some condensing of certain items in the market, but they seem to be trying to uh, occupy some of the same space. Yeah, it's it's actually really fascinating. Um, I, I was um, I got one last little you know one last comment. I guess I'm not gonna you know not gonna keep this you know not gonna ramble on too much, but um, it's fascinating kind of seeing what companies are buying. Like, you know, it's not I wouldn't say what companies because we know that the companies that are buying these other companies are like these huge players. Right. Know, Salesforce is buying somebody like we talked about Quip a number of weeks back, actually a couple of months, actually on uh, a couple of months ago on social chatter. Um, you know, so you've got like Salesforce jumping in there. You have Oracle, for instance, buying out some of these other companies, yeah. Microsoft buying LinkedIn, which included SlideShare and Lynda.com. You know, um, I, I think, you know, you're still like those companies are just getting, you know, they're just, generating ginormous um, just piles of cash and they can just throw it at that company and just, you know, do an acquire, you know? That's right. And um, so it's just, it's fascinating because it's like, you might as well just make like a, a program that does like one thing and you can get bought out, I guess. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It seems to be the thing, but they're also, you know, it seems to be that they're occupying much of the same space. There's uh, in, and there's some, I said condensing, but some consolidating going on by, by the big dogs in in the industry 
And, and, you know, do you think that's like a balance of power? Do you think that's something else? Like, I think that's competition. I think that's, you know, yeah, balance of power and, and trying to stay competitive. Um, the only problem with trying to stay competitive is do they hold the company as a kind of a separate entity or absorb it? Uh, because it seems to me when they absorb, they become part of that corporate structure that really slows everything down. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, see how those things work. So just one last parting thought on this. Do you think that people are doing this on purpose? Like for instance, you know, do you think that these companies like, you know, that are just creating these like little, you know, one-off type apps, do you think they're kind of just doing them like with no real, and, and, I mean, here's the thing, if I started my own company and I said, Hey, you know what? I'm going to start my own company and maybe my goal is not to get to like that huge size because we all know that, you know, a, a smaller company, a more nim- they're more nimble. Right. right? Um, when you start to, you know, add all those different layers, it just gets really complicated to run that company. Right. Uh, like, I think a lot of companies start off with that, that thought in mind that, mm-hmm. hey, you know, we come up with a, a there, everybody's got a, a scratch to or an itch to scratch and we come up with something. If it's a viable product, uh, maybe we sell out. We don't necessarily have to hold on to it forever. Right. Well, and I guess you could probably almost say that about like, you know, from a finance standpoint, like people that buy like stocks, for instance, you know, yeah. what's one of the things that people always say about stocks? They say don't ever fall in love with the stock, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And like, or they say don't get married to it, don't fall in love with it, whatever, right. you know, same principle. They basically say, hey, you know what? If it's a good company, like keep it, but just don't be afraid to part with it at some point. Right. That's right. And I think the thing that I that I find funny is that the Apples and the Microsofts solved so many problems. Mm-hmm. Right. Their Microsoft Office solved so many problems, but you the apps that we're seeing come out today, it's like it solves a single problem that you've sort of mentioned. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, how big of a problem was this? Uh, but they seem to really identify one area that they want to fix. And yeah. And, and what is so like intriguing, I think just about that whole like model is that it's literally a single feature. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, like I'll give you a, like a case in point. I talked about this app actually a, a while ago. Um, and, you know, and then we'll, we'll just wrap this up. But the app I talked about was, um, okay. So the app was, uh, I want to say it was Annable, An- Notable, I think. Um, I don't know if you ever like. You know. No, I don't remember this one. Okay. So basically what this app does. So this is this is how simple this is. So you basically open a picture. And then you can draw arrows and circle things. And like, for instance, if I wanted to, for instance, like put a little circle around your books behind you. Right. I can basically just tap on it. It gives me a little, uh, a little like circle. I just, you know make the circle whatever size and I draw an arrow or I put some text on it. That's all that app does. Okay. It's very useful, but it it's like, it's so microscopic. Yeah. It's like, Hey, that should just be in another, you know, in another another product. like put that for instance, into Canva, for instance, or put that into pick monkey, yeah. you know, or like put it in a default app of like a device, because I think that everybody would actually find that pretty useful if they could just draw arrows and stuff on. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll use, if we need to draw something mm-hmm. and we've done, I've done it this way for the company. Uh, if I've tried to explain something that I wanted to then maybe turn into a video, mm-hmm. uh, I'll use the Snapchat. I'll use Snapchat for that where I can actually draw a circle around something to, to really highlight it. And then I'll just export that picture uh, and put it up on Twitter or something like that. Mm-hmm. If I'm trying to make a point about why you should add content to your profile and things like that I'll circle it here this is what i'm trying to describe to you uh so it seems to me that that may already it, now that's not in you actually i guess you could use the, some of the arrows in snapchat that way yeah, you, you could basically i mean, I mean it, and that's getting creative basically you're yeah. basically round tripping something on a device and a lot of people i don't think really think beyond that they think like oh it's a one-use app right well, hey it actually can do more than just that yeah, yeah. So, so that's I actually that's good. Don't know that I need another app for that. No. Uh, and here's the thing: like, I I actually tried out a couple of different apps, and I was like, oh, this one's pretty good. This one's pretty good. And I ended up actually just like, you know, deleting the one that I didn't want because, like, I think part of it was because they were charging for it or something. Right. One of the apps. It was like, oh, it was like sort of free, and then it was like you try to use like the cool stuff, like, oh, I want to add arrows. You know, oh, you got to pay money for that. Um, <laughs> 
it, I mean, that's kind of like a silly like upgrade, you know? Yeah, it is. It is. And maybe if you were offering more than that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, well, is that all of them today? That's all I have for today, actually. Yeah, and I know I, I know we sort of rambled on here at the end, but um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, all right. Just a quick heads up for everyone that's watching. You know, if you want to go and uh, you know, if you want to like get notified about next week's show, do this every single week. Nick, I don't know if you can join next week. Yeah, um, I'll have to let you know. It depends on on how the week goes. Okay, I, I really appreciate you filling in um, for uh, for Benson. I I don't know. Um, I know he's got some new stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, he, got some exciting stuff going on. I don't know if we're going to make it episode 50, which I actually was like, that'd be awesome to get the episode 50 of this. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but I appreciate you filling in. I'm glad you're working today. Yeah, I'm glad you reached out. So awesome. We'll, All have right. to, you know, we'll have to be more in touch because I mean, I think that we have, you know, I think we share a lot of similar views on things. I think so. I think so. If we're not connected, uh, I'll, I'll go make sure. I think I follow social chefs through the, through my professional uh, Twitter, I'll make sure we're connected on on the uh, other on my personal side as well. Awesome! All so, right. you know, I want to say thanks a lot for joining in. So much really great, uh, you know, great insight shared today, and um, we will uh, we'll catch up online. Thanks. All right. Have a good one, Christian. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.